First problem says, draw a free body diagram of the following situation. A book is sliding across a table. You do need to consider a frictional force as an opposing force in this situation. So just like everything, the hard work is involved in just understanding the situation. So let's first draw kind of a more complete diagram so that we understand what's really going on here. Here's some legs and here is a tabletop, right? Something like this. And uh, we have a, uh, uh, a book sliding across a table. So what we're gonna do is I'll draw a big old fat book just so we can kind of see what's going on here. Now don't forget this book is actually moving. So it's moving to the right, let's call it, with a velocity V. It doesn't tell me right or left, but I'm just gonna draw a picture as best I can and just envision it sliding to the right. Now, first of all, think about your everyday experience. You push this book to get it going, but there's, after the moment that you let go, you're no longer pushing on the book, but it is still moving. And as it slides across the surface, there's rubbing, uh, which is, uh, generates friction, which then opposes the motion and slows it down, and eventually the book will come to a stop. Once the book comes to a stop, or maybe it slides off the table, but assuming it comes to a stop, when it's not moving anymore, there's no more frictional force, and there's no more pushing force, so then nothing is happening, it's just sitting there. And it's in what we call equilibrium, nothing is moving anymore. The word equilibrium means everything has uh, kind of reached the uh, steady state and uh, nothing is changing any further. That's what it basically means, okay? So let's do our best. This is not the free body diagram, but let's do our best to at least draw some of these forces that are acting on this guy, okay? Now we know that there is no pushing force. I'm not pushing it anymore because it just says it's sliding across the table. So we're not gonna have a force of pushing. The, that has already happened in the past. Now it is just sliding. So there is no force really pushing it this way. That's already been happening. But since it's moving this way, we know that there has to be some frictional force acting in this direction. So we'll call it F sub F. It's a vector quantity. So because the frictional force is in opposition to the velocity, it's gonna to start to slow it down and hopefully it'll reach a stop right before it falls off the table there. All right, what other forces are acting on this uh, block here? Well, we have the force of gravity, right? And the force of gravity is, uh, or the, the weight is mass times gravity. That's acting on the block. And then of course the block is pushing into the table and the table in turn is pushing back into the block. So that's another force acting on the block which is going up, and that force is called the normal force, acting and going in the up direction. But notice this situation is different than the last problem. Here we have like an unbalanced situation. We do have an up and a down force, and, and these look, uh, we'll talk more about it, but they look to be uh, uh, equal and opposite because the block is not moving up or down, but there's an unbalanced situation here. And that means because there's an unbalanced, uh, an unbalanced uh, force in the X direction, there must be some acceleration, right? So let's kind of like do a little more work and see if we can figure out what that acceleration is or even is there really an acceleration in that direction? So let's translate this diagram, which has a lot more information in it, to a true free body diagram, which we will draw over here. So what we do is we draw the same book, but now we remove the table, it's gone. We remove the planets, the stars, the galaxies, the air, everything is gone. The only thing we care about is this. All right, and then we know that acting down is a weight here, which is mass times gravity. And we know that acting, up, acting upwards is a force, which we call the normal force. So this is a force, the earth is acting on the book, pulling it down. And this is a force where the table is pushing up on the book. So these are two forces acting on the book. So that's why they belong in the diagram. All right, and then we have a force pointing to the left, which we call the frictional force, like this. But there is, no, there is no force pushing to the right because that book has already been released from your hand, and at that moment there is no force going in that direction. So let's, uh, this is the free body diagram, but let's see if we can uh, learn a little more about this. Let's talk about the x direction. In the x direction, and then we're gonna talk about in the y direction. Now let's actually look at the y direction first, right, because this is very common, right? The y direction. So what do we have? The sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. But what are the sum of the forces in the up-down direction? Up is positive, down is negative. So we have N minus mg, so this is the normal force minus gravity, the minus because this is a downward acting force, and this is equal to the mass of the book. We don't know what the mass is, so we just put M there. And what is the acceleration in the y direction? Well, this book is sliding this way. 
it is uh, moving in that direction, there is no acceleration in the up-down direction, and so the acceleration in the y direction is zero. So since zero is on the right, uh, I have m or n minus mg is equal to zero, and the normal force is equal to the mass times gravity. Just add this to both sides. So what we have figured out is that because this book is not accelerating up or down, the upward normal force must be equal to the weight exactly balanced. And that is the reason why the book is not accelerating up and down because these two forces are in balance with each other. All right, so this makes sense. Now let's walk over here and talk about in the x direction. So we need to do the same kind of thing. The sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. But there's only one force acting in the x direction, and negative x direction is this way, positive is this way, so this frictional force is really a negative number, negative f, uh, sub f is the uh, frictional force negative because it's acting in the negative x direction, is equal to the mass uh, of this thing uh, times whatever acceleration it's undergoing. And here we don't put zero here. The reason is because we suspect that there really is an acceleration happening here. What would that acceleration be? Solve for a. So a sub x is going to be equal to this divided by this, which is negative f sub f over m. And notice that if I know what the frictional force is, which I've, uh, there has to be some frictional force, it's sliding on the table, I put it in there, it's a negative number, divide by mass, the acceleration I get will be negative, right? That means the acceleration will be pointing opposite towards my velocity, and that means that it will be slowing this thing down the whole time. So because the force is acting to the left, and the velocity is to the right, this thing is sliding to the right, then the acceleration is going to be acting this way, slowing it down. So that means the book will be going this way and then slowing down and then eventually reach a stop. When it reaches a stop, then there will be no more frictional force. Therefore, there will be no more acceleration in the x direction once it reaches a stop and then everything just stops and everything reaches equilibrium. Nothing is moving any further. So you can see in the vertical direction, everything is already balanced. In the horizontal direction, there is an acceleration, which is negative. Uh, because of the unbalanced nature of the x direction here. That's basically what I'm trying to extract out of this problem. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. It says, a bucket of water is attached to a rope which is being raised out of a well. The mass of the bucket and the water together is 5.0 kilograms. If the bucket is being raised at a rate of 3.00 meters per second squared, what is the force exerted uh, by the rope on the bucket? So what we want to figure out is, this is a numeric problem. We're actually given the mass, and we're given the acceleration that this bucket is experiencing as it's being raised up, and that means it's, it's going faster and faster and faster as it's being raised up, and we want to figure out what force is required to pull on that bucket to make it do that, okay? So we need to draw a free body diagram, but in the beginning, it's going to be easier probably to draw the whole thing before we draw the actual free body diagram. So this is some kind of a well, very deep well, you know, something like that. There's like water in the bottom of it or, you know, however you want to visualize it. And there is some bucket that is basically down here uh, like this. You could call some kind of bucket or something like this. All right. Now this bucket is attached to a rope, which is coming up like this and so on. So what, what information can we put about this? Well, we know that the mass of this bucket is equal to 5.00 kilograms. That's given to us. And we know that this bucket, I'll just kind of draw it off to the side, there's an acceleration of this bucket, which is 3.00, a little dot right there, meters per second squared. So this bucket is accelerating, it's not going at a constant velocity, it's actually speeding up as it goes up, right? So we know that there is a rope connected to this bucket, and because of that, there is some force acting on this thing. So I'm gonna call that force the tension because it's, we usually use the word tension when it's a force that is being applied through a rope. There is tension in the rope. So there's tied here and there, I'm drawing it as an arrow and there's some tension T there. But acting contrary to that is the weight of this bucket and the weight of this is mass times gravity. So you could say weight is equal to mass times gravity. So you see this diagram has a lot of other stuff written here. It's got numbers, masses, and all the other stuff. And so if you wanna simplify the diagram, really drawing a free body diagram would look something more like this. Just simplify things into a bucket, which is a simpler looking bucket. And then you just have a downward force acting on this bucket, which is the mass times the gravity, which is the weight of the object. And then you have some force in the upward direction 
uh, which is the tension. You can call it F if you want to, but I'm just gonna call it T for tension. And that's it. This is the free body diagram. You see how simple and elegant the free body diagram is. You dispense with the well. You dispense with the water if you were to draw water here. You dispense with anything else. You focus on the object, make it as simple as you can, and the force is acting on the object. Earth pulling down with a weight, tension in the rope pulling up with some T, okay? Now, I subconsciously drew the arrow for the tension bigger than the weight because I know that this thing is accelerating upward. If the tension in this rope were exactly the same as the weight, then we would have balanced forces in the y direction and the thing wouldn't be accelerating at all. But we know it's accelerating, so I subconsciously drew it longer. Now let's calculate the tension. Uh, in other words, how many newtons are in that uh, rope there. So what we have to do is write down that, I guess I'll do it right here the sum of the forces in the y direction, because that's all we have right here, is equal to ma in the y direction. There's nothing happening in the x direction at all, so we don't have to write an equation for that. Now up is positive and down is negative, so t acts in the upward direction, and mg, the weight, acts in the negative direction, so we put this minus sign, and this is the weight. So the upward tension minus the weight has got to be equal to the mass of the thing times the uh, acceleration a sub y. Now let's put in the numbers that we have. So the mass of this thing is five kilograms, so I'll put uh, five kilograms, and then we have 9.8 meters per second squared. We have kilograms, meters per second squared right there. On the right-hand side, we have five kilograms, so we put that there, and a sub y. We know that it's oriented upward. It says it's uh, uh, upward, so that means it's positive, and it's 3.00 meters per second squared. So we have to make sure that we have the right units. This is meters per second squared, and these are in kilograms, so everything's right, so we're gonna get newtons at the end, all right? So five times uh, 9.8 gives us 49. Whoops, I need to have not an equal sign here. This is a minus sign, and what we're gonna get is 49 here, and then on the right-hand side, five times three is 15, so you can just put 15 right here, and now we wanna solve for the tension. All we do is we add 49 to both sides, so 15 plus 49 works out to be uh, 64, Newtons. And notice we get a positive number here because any forces that have positive numbers are acting up and any forces that have negative numbers are acting down. That's why we had the negative sign right here. So we get an answer of positive 64 Newtons, which means the tension in this rope, which means the force acting in that rope is positive 64. Now let's go back through it and make sure it makes sense. We know the bucket is actually not only moving upward, but accelerating upward. So since F equals MA, there has to be a net force acting up on the object to make it accelerate up, which we know it is from the problem statement. So if this really is 64, uh, which is what we calculated, and the five times the 98, that's MG, so it's 49 newtons of weight downward, 64, uh, 64 newtons of, uh, of, uh, of weight in the, uh, I'm sorry, tension in the up direction. So we have an imbalance. We have a larger force in the up direction compared to the downward direction. There's a net force in the upward direction is what I'm trying to say. And that net force is what gives rise to the uh, acceleration in the up direction. So when you do these problems long enough, you get very good at identifying what the forces are. And you get very good at knowing only with practice, okay? You get good at knowing what to expect. The problem says this thing is accelerating upward. In your mind, you start learning Newton's law and you realize that F equals MA. If there is an acceleration, there must be a net force also in the same direction, the up direction. Therefore, there has to be more forces acting up on this thing than there are acting down on this thing. And that is exactly what we figured out. There's a 64 Newton pulling force in the up direction. The weight, mass times gravity, which was uh, five times 9.8 worked out to be 49. So since 64 is bigger than 49, that is why there is an imbalance of forces in the up direction, which leads to an acceleration in the up direction. So this just comes with practice. If you don't quite get it, or if you're like, oh, what does this mean? Then you just have to do more problems. That's it. Everybody gets it by, by, by solving them. So do not just watch this and say, oh, I'm done. No, what you do now is you pause, and you go back and you do it yourself. You read the problem again, you don't look at what I've done here, and you reproduce it yourself. You draw your own free body diagram. You write your own Newton's law. You calculate your own tension. And when you do that enough times, you will get confidence that you know what you're doing. That's the only way any of us learn this stuff, because when I learned it, you know, I was not confident in what I was doing. 
It takes practice. So practice these, follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue to build your skills. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.